the first weapon that we're going to formally work with is going to be the staff. As you remember, we have the two-headed staff, we have the one-headed staff. The first cop that I'm going to introduce you to, darkroom staff, contains the elements of both. Basically, the weapon we have here is a plungent or a striking movement. The movement from here, if you're coming forward, the strike can also be a block. The first movement that you'll use then is either from a closed hand position or at a distance. Remember, the more you choke up on any type of weapon, the less power you're going to have. Also, you're closer to the opponent and you've lost the advantage you have with the staff. The primary movement of any staff, though, is the actual strike. This could have also been a block. When I break this down with the partner and the application of the cotton become more apparent from here also, it can become a hooking movement and then use of the other end. Notice for this reason it's called a two-headed staff because it really doesn't matter which end you use. Once again, the primary use then is going to be the strike, the block, and the exchange of hands. Okay. The next movement that you want to concern yourself in any type of staff set is the turning of the staff from side to side. Let's assume that I have it on this side, I want to turn it to the other. Get it from here then, it's a matter of each of the hands at this point being in a position to turn over. The simplest maneuver for get side to side is simply to turn the forward and the back hand. As the exercise from here, it's done in a spinning movement. The hands can be far apart, getting from one side to the other. Notice that any of these times, I could have gone back this way, or I could have gone back on the opposite side. The other method of spinning is to keep the hands closer together. While this allows you to get more movement turn of it from here, you do not have as good a control with both hands together as you have the hands apart. The next method that is used from here then is a swinging movement. You notice the greatest advantage of your swinging movement from here, of course, is distance. The next aspect we take from here is actually a striking movement such as you would use with a spear. Basically, then you'll notice as we get into a staff, the movements are very elementary. There aren't that many. Basically, it is an offensive weapon. But remember, your striking movement forward from here could have just as easily been to block the opponent. The first movement used from here is either the block or the strike. We use it as a hooking movement to deflect. We use the opposite end. The next aspect then that we're concerned with is the spinning and the turning, either single or double-handed from side to side. This is simply a matter, the same as you would in freestyle, switching from one side to the other to take best advantage of your position in the opponents. The next is the swinging for the distance, and the final is going to be the poke. The thing I like about the first set that I'm going to introduce to you now from your darkroom staff. And the name darkroom comes from the fact you're starting from a central position. Assume that you are in a room with no lights. It is a dark room. Each of the movements from here, you're going to move in a direction. You can always find the direction of how far it is to the wall. And your steps are always designed that you will always return to the central position. Hence the name darkroom. No matter where you come to, you retreat to this position, you advance in the next direction, you advance the direction behind. Basically, the set then will cover 360 degrees. And even with your eyes closed, as if you were in a dark room, if you run into an object anything else, you should always be able to return to the neutral position in the middle. This staff set then is going to incorporate all of the basic movements you have. I will take it, first of all, simply as the set, slow enough that you can see it, and when I break it down with the partner, it'll make more sense. The basic staff set is taken off the right side. This is gonna be the power movement. From this point, 
I will take the set simply as a staff set. The next phase, I'll walk through it slowly as I break it down for you. Dark room, staff. On this phase, I will now take the dark room staff, breaking down each of the individual movements. With particular emphasis placed upon the change of the hands to put the staff in the correct position. Your first movement from here, you'll notice that since the strike is going to be across, that the right hand is in this manner from here, that you're striking and using the power of the hand. The left hand is basically used only for control. One of the greatest problems and mistakes that the average student has if they're working with the staff is that when they're using the 
single-handed strike forward, they keep letting the left hand come forward, and they're losing the advantage of distance and power. Your first movement is I'm stepping out. Notice the right hand is slightly below the hip. So when I pick it up, the left hand can automatically at this point go to the end of the staff. Notice as I pick it up also, the staff is cocked slightly from here like a baseball bat to give me the strike forward. Notice that each of these striking movements as we're taking from here is high and directly to the head. Your first movement, I'm stepping in with the right foot. Picking the staff up, there is your first strike. Notice now the change in position of the hand. I'm going to block against the opponent's counter. If I do this, I'm pulling directly against the thumb at this point, which is not the strength of my hand. Remember, the thumb is always the weakest part of any grip. Your movement, one. The hand is turned over, so as I hook and block with this hand now, I'm working against the strength of the hand. At the same time now, as I come forward, I'm striking. Notice that I'm getting my hand from here open so that I'm not actually striking with my hand against the opponent's head from here. Notice that the strike is made with the opponent is going to be directly to the weapon. Once again, your breakdown. The strike one. The hand turns over. It will slide down the staff as I strike forward at this point with the hand. Okay, your next movement from here now, I'm going to hook the right hand in this particular manner from here as I block across. Imagine with all these that the opponent's weapon will use, for example, a staff. Later on, we'll show it against bladed weapons from here as you're making this blocks across the head. As I clear it, notice from here, once again, I turn the right hand over from here so it is not exposed at all as I'm making the strike forward. Notice because of the closeness of this particular movement now that the left hand has not slid all the way to the bottom. Once again, breaking it down section by section. One, the exchange of the hand. The hand slides down as I strike forward. I hook with the right hand, blocking high. It slides slightly now as I turn the right hand over and strike. At this point now, we're going to do introduce the first of our spinning movements. As I break it down with the opponent, these are blocking movements. You'll notice that what I'm trying to do also on this one from here is to generate force, leverage, and power. And I do this by putting the staff from a stationary position into motion. So your movement from here is one. I'm blocking down, blocking. Notice that this position the hands from here. I let the left hand slide down once again now. The right hand turns over. Once again, so I'm working against here the power of my hand, not exposing my hand as I strike. And we always take it as a head level. Remember, I can always drop this down from here. The tendency when you're practicing, make sure you use the head as a target. You'll never have to strike any higher than that and block down. Once again, your hooking movement was one on the strike. One, two, at this point, this is where the transition of the hands will come. The left hand slides all the way down. The right hand adjusts over and you strike. Notice the pivot of the hip and the body to gain the power. The next section then is going to involve a series of our spins going from side to side. In the cockpit, we're gonna have a designated amount Remember, at this position, the object is that as I complete the spins, there's going to be a hand transition, and then I will step in a given direction. Your movement from here, from the previous motion. One, two, three. From here, I'm going to take a double step back. At this point, it's done one of two ways. It's done with a single step, which is natural, or it's done with a double step. If you use the double step from a technical standpoint in the content, it will always enable you to end up on exactly the same line you started with. This is a, simply a technical standpoint. So your movement from here, for the demonstration, I will use a double step. Notice as I'm coming back now from here, the right hand turns over and the left hand. So you're basically in this position, so without changing the hands, you're able 
to do the spin. So from this position now, the right hand turns over, the left hand is already in position, I use the double step. As I step back, I spin by the left side. I spin by the right side. I spin by the left side. I spin by the right side. I will count these off for you from here. Remember, these are simply arbitrary and things like this. This is simply an exercise. And as an instructor beginning, you may even want to put two to three extra spins in here to get the student used to it. Your movement from here. Left, right, left, right. So what we've done at this point, we've had two complete spins on the left side of the body and two complete spins on the right side of the body. Notice that this position, we come to here. What I want to do now is go back to my original striking position. The left hand in this particular case now slides down to the end. The same movement we've used before. The right hand turns over from here to give my striking. Notice that this particular hand movement is used throughout this entire cot. Once again, we come from this position, striking from here. What I'm going to do now is to step from here directly back to six o'clock with the left foot. As I do, I strike head high. What we're going to do now is introduce the third phase of it. Notice that when we took the first set of spins, the body was stationary. The second set of spins was done with a double adjustment of foot the body coming to a stationary position, then we took the spins. What we're going to do now when introduce the third phase of this kata is a coordination of the stepping as we use the spins. I will take it from the previous movements from here. Stepping back, left, right, left, right. I will pause it at this point, the exchange of the hand as you step this right. Now to get to the spinning, once again, I will adjust the hands exactly the same way. The left hand adjusts up, the right hand adjusts the position. From here, as I step with the right foot, I do a half turn. I do a half turn. So what we've done now is taken this spin movement from here and transferred it to the right side of the body. At this point, I'm going to strike again. Once again, exactly the same procedure. The left hand slides down, the right hand turns over. This time we add, as I step with the right, we strike. What we're going to do now is to take the fourth phase of the spinning. I will retreat with it. Once again, the spin was in position. The spin, we step back, came to a stationary position. We advance forward as we use the spinning movement strike. This time we're going to retreat from here and use the spinning movement and a strike. Take it from your previous position, from here stepping back, the spin, the spin, the spin, the adjustment of the hand, and the strike. Spin by the left side as you step right. Spin by the right side as you step left. The adjustment of the hand as you strike. Now, as I step back, I will adjust the hands to our standard spinning. The left hand adjusts up, the right hand turns over. As I step back with the right foot, we carry it by the left side of the body. I, as I step with the right, we bring it to this point. I want to strike. What we're going to do is shift our direction 90 degrees. Once again, I shift the hand and pivot and strike in with the hand. What we've now done in this basic kata is taking almost all of the elements of spinning that you're going to see in any advanced cot. The spinning is done in place. It's done stepping back from here, completed in place. The spin is now put in coordination with advancing forward in a strike. The spin in its fourth phase was then taken with the spin crossing both sides of the body, retreating the strike and the turn of the body. We will now introduce the next phase from here, which is using a poking movement, or if you visualize this as a spear, you use it as a spear. What I want to point out also, since this is not a spear, it is a two-headed staff. This is one of the elements of it. We're going to strike first forward with one hand. Then we're going to turn over, and this is where the two heads of the staff comes in. It really doesn't matter which hand you strike with. 
I will not put this in combination with our final movements from here as we're striking forward. One, the adjustment of the hand, the step, the strike. The adjustment, the right step, the left step, the adjust, a strike to this position. At this point, we're now going to use it as a spear. I would draw it slightly, spear forward. I want to turn it over. Therefore, I have to adjust the right hand over. The left hand has to come this position from here, this very movement. The right hand then adjusts straight back as I spear to the front. Once again, this particular movement, the strike as we come forward. The spearing movement. The right hand turns over from here. The left hand comes down. Notice how it turns over also. So that's basically, I can hold it with one hand, spear it with the left. The next phase now is going to be what we call the long range movements. Notice everything that we've had up to this point has been fairly confined in the fact that we're in control with both hands. The next movement now is going to use the full reach of the staff from here as I come around. We'll work the different heights. I'm going to use a spinning movement low, then we'll use a spinning movement to the middle section. We'll take it from here, basically as we came around, the first spearing movement, the second spearing movement. From here, I hook with the right hand. Clear low from here as we do our release with the left hand. The left hand is used at this particular point to give me the momentum to transfer to the right hand. What we're going to do then, this will be the starting point from here. You'll sweep through with one low one. The right hand will pass once, it will pass twice, and then I will stop it. So your motion from here is coming around. The low sweep, one. Notice if I don't have any velocity on this particular staff, how the staff is going to, at this point, drop down. As soon as your strap is not parallel to the ground, it indicates you do not have enough speed and you do not have enough velocity. Be very careful when you're working this in the studio, around mirrors or other students, that you have plenty of room. Sooner or later, you're going to lose any staff that you have a lot of velocity on. Your motion, one. Two, we stop it from here. The next movement from here now, we're going to go under. Visualize the opponent's weapon is on top of mine. At this particular point, I'm going to strike up in a blocking movement from here. Obviously, if I've cleared the weapon, that means I have a low center line, and the strike is going to be with the right hand to the opponent's groin. So your movement, we stop it from here. Notice I come in, it is cleared over my left shoulder. The strike is made forward with the right hand. The kata then ends by withdrawing the right foot to position. You should end up in exactly the same position you started. When I break it down with an opponent, from here I will be able to be a little bit more exacting, show you the relationship of the hands how you can actually use a staff against a bladed weapon from here, clearing into such a manner that you're able to neutralize the opponent's blade and be able to work against the backside of the sword, assuming, of course, that it is a single-edged sword. Once again, a lot of the detail from here, the explanation will come when I break it down with an opponent. Dark room, staff.